Photo Shelter presents Vision Slightly Blurred. I'm Alan Murabayashi. And I'm Sarah Jacobs. Sarah, it's that time of the year when all of the photo contests start releasing their winners. And one of the ones that I always look forward to is the Wildlife Photographer of the Year, uh, which is sponsored by the UK's National History Museum. And this year, one of the images that won was uh, photographed by a biologist in Norway named Odin Rickardson, who is well known in nature photography circles. He's won a ton of awards. His images are stunning. But in this particular case, he has an eagle on a branch. And in the caption, he says that he took roadkill and moved it close to the branch to basically habituate the eagle to come by where he had set up a camera trap. And a camera trap is uh, where you have a camera. It could have like an infrared beam or something triggers the camera to take the photo of the animal for you so you don't have to be sitting in a blind the whole time. The terms and conditions of the contest prohibit baiting. Mm -hmm. Should a photographer who baits be able to win the contest? Can you, can you define baiting? I wouldn't say that there's a uniform understanding of what baiting is, but for example, there are places in the United States and elsewhere that are game farms. They raise the animals, wild animals specifically to be on this game farm so that tourists can come and watch wild animals. And a lot of these places also have facilities to allow photographers to come on and shoot the wild animals, even though it's in a completely Mm -hmm. domesticated environment. The problem with baiting is that you habituate wild animals to stop hunting, basically. Oh, it's It's a problem. You know, if you want to observe sharks, there's a lot of places where they throw chum. It's like cut up fish with all the blood streaming out. They'll chum the water so that it attracts the sharks. In the case of Mr. Rickardson, (laughs) he is a marine biologist. He's not a terrestrial biologist, but he is a marine biologist. Mm -hmm. He seems like a really straight up dude. Yeah. And you you looked at some of the images. Yeah, they're amazing. They're amazing. Yeah. And and, I mean, he takes it. It's a very scientific approach in how he's capturing these images. So this golden eagle image that one where he is uh, using the carcass of roadkill to attract the animal. Which is not in the shot. And then... If you go to another contest called the Big Picture Contest, you see that exact same branch. Oh, no. And there is a grouse. And if you read this caption about this particular image, he doesn't say that he left roadkill there, but he says the grouse, when the eagle wasn't there, the grouse came by. Mm. Now, I talked to some grouse experts. I talked to one <laughs> grouse expert. Wait, okay, wait. Is a grouse <laughs> a type of bird? A grouse is a type of bird. Okay. I talked to you know a guy that knows a lot about bird behavior, and he goes... I don't know that that's actually natural behavior. Oh. I questioned the veracity of that image, but it made me sort of uneasy about the circumstances under which this image was created. You can't expect the same sort of ethical uh, trappings to be held throughout the world. And so maybe this is just a case where, huh, he (laughs) found some roadkill, he moved it, the eagle came, then the grouse came, he shot these amazing pictures. Won some awards. Yeah, (laughs) won some awards. He's using it to communicate to the public. What's your take? The story is making me realize some of his images, he's focused in the water. So he has this like incredible camera that can get half of the image under the water and then half on top. And so you get to see the boat and just this like massive animal next to it under the water. But now that's making me think maybe he's doing that thing that you described. Like chumming? Yeah, chumming. Maybe he's chumming. I, yeah, I don't know that he's doing it in that case. I mean, I think, you know, he is a marine biologist. He grew up in that area. Yeah. Um, well, I'm confused. Like, if the rules say that you can't bait, but then part of his entry is like, I put an animal here. Right. Like, the, how did he win? Maybe it falls under this this gray area of using a roadkill isn't considered baiting because there's a difference between oh, live baiting okay. and dead yeah. baiting. Yeah. Maybe some of it is this, you know, a cultural thing of Europe. Europe's feelings about ethical wildlife photography and America's Mm -hmm. uh, feelings around that. Mm -hmm. The purpose of bringing up this series of photos is not to impugn his photographic skills or his skills as a scientist. But I do think that there is a big question, particularly when it comes to wildlife photography, over what is best for the animal Hmm. and how does capturing an image uh, potentially imperil that animal. Uh There's actually a whole line of thought around the ethics of this. Yeah. 
that I think goes beyond a visceral argument of like, oh, the P- PC police are are here. I actually think they're. You oh know, no. He might know exactly what he's doing because he's a trained biologist and he's been working with these animals. But somebody who who isn't as trained sees this image and goes, "Well, oh, I'm going to drag some roadkill over to this branch and then start shooting away." With it maybe a different species of bird, mm. maybe it's actually endangering the animal without knowing because they're not experts. And so when we award images, people are always going to copy what's found in those images. Mm-hmm. Just like on Instagram. Yes. Whatever image gets a lot of likes, everyone wants that same image. Yeah. I hope that's not happening because, I mean, part of his whole uh, shtick is that he is teaching people. Yes. And so he and he has found that his photography has helped make his teachings more relatable and understandable. So, like, that's wonderful. So hopefully that his pictures are not influencing anybody to go get roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> and then try. All right, let's go get this roadkill. Yeah. Do we care about these animals or not? Hmm. And that's not to say that every wildlife image has to have conservation as the motivation for taking the image. I think it's fine to just take an image because you like it. When I was out in Jackson for the, the Summit Nature Workshop, the very well-known Nikon ambassador, Dave Black, who raised his hand and he goes, nothing against conservation photographers. I just love taking photos. I love taking great photos. hmm to the organizers of these contests, it's, it's great to have language in there talking about the ethics of wildlife photography, but maybe some clarification on the enforcement. Yeah. For Mr. Rickardson, I great know, photos. Says, sorry, if it says no baiting, like... Yeah, like, then no baiting, right? Yeah. Love his photography. Wish there was no ambiguity over the ethics of this particular photo and the grouse photo. It's not a black and white situation by any means. 